एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम in part 1 we did lagrange mean value theorem statement then we uh, did the conditions of the theorem and two questions we took where one in one it was uh, the theorem was verified and in other it was not satisfying the conditions of rolls uh, mean value theorem hello everyone i am dr seema thakran welcome to s chand academy if you want to learn engineering mathematics please refer to the book by s chand publishing the e book link is given in the description box below now i am taking different problems and uh, the c value uh, is not that it will always lie in the open interval so let's take uh, with the one example and my first example uh, to show this is Uh, the question is f x x x minus one x minus two and the interval is zero to half. By taking this example, my point is that if a function is derivable, if a function is continuous, we can apply mean value theorem. But it's not that every time the c will lie in that open interval. If it is not lying, we'll leave it. And but anyhow, one c will exist. it's not that number of c's we are counting if uh, suppose there are three values one c 100% will get but two values of c might not uh, lie in the interval will then we have to uh, uh, you can say we can we have to avoid, avoid or neglect those values so let's see for the solution first i write i multiply this function because uh, Uh, i have to see the derivative part and for derivative it's better if i am um, multiply this so my function is i am multiplying it first so this is my given function this is the function i have multiplied it and x cube minus 3x square plus 2x so my fx is x cube minus 3x square plus 2x this is and interval is 0 to half it is polynomial therefore f is continuous in 0 to half and f is derivable also polynomial it is coming to the point now so by mean value theorem this is the surety that one c will exist therefore by mean value theorem we get that there exist c belonging to the open interval this such that the derivative at c is equal to f half minus f 0 upon half now x cube minus 3x square plus 2x is the function derivative will be 3x square minus 6x plus 2 i write this value so it is 3c square minus 6c plus 2 and this is half so it is basically twice of because it is in the denominator twice of f of half i am calculating because this is my fx f of half value will be half cube minus 3 1 by 4 plus uh, 1 so 1 by 8 minus 3 by 4 this plus 1 finally the lcm So one minus six plus eight, so nine minus six that is three by eight. That is my f of half. Three by eight. F of zero because uh, completely we have x in uh, each uh, term. You can see the here we have x x x, so it will be zero. And this I have already adjusted. So now I'll simplify. 
3c square minus 6c plus 2, 3 by 4. 3c square minus 6c. I, I just take out, uh, uh, I take this 2 to this side. It is quadratic equation, so you can easily see that it will have two values of c. So, my complete, this is minus uh, 5 by 4. The complete expression is, and the values, I calculate it because root finding uh, by minus b plus minus formula, directly I can't see. So, the formula is minus b plus minus b square minus 4, uh, 4ac and upon 2a. So, this is 24 plus minus b square is uh, 24 square that is. So, 24 square will be 576 minus 4ac, 4ac uh, uh, AC is 60. So, 4 into 60 upon 24. So, my final value, it will be 24 plus minus, uh, this is 240. I subtracted. So, this is 336. Anyhow, uh, so 336. So, it is anyhow a huge value. So, it is 2, 2. So, 4 under the root. 21, 24. Cancel it. So, it is 1 plus minus 1 by 6 this. And under root 21. Which value is now lying in the interval 0 to half? That is the question now. So, under root 21 is near uh, near about. So, one value is this and another value is this. Obviously, this is 1 minus something and uh, this 1 minus something under root 21 will be uh, something. Uh, it will be. Uh, 21 so uh, 4 point so this value is less than uh, 1 minus this this is less than this will belong to the open interval 0 half 100 percent this is more than 1 because 1 plus something this will not belong to open interval 0 to half in this case two values are existing it's not that each value will lie in uh, that open interval this is lying in this open interval but the surety of mean value theorem is that one value you will get for sure, but not like that whatever value of C you are getting, that value will exist in that open interval. So, this is, uh, this example is proving that, that one value is lying, one value is not lying. Now, another problem. So, the problem is if, let f be a function. Defined for all x and satisfying fx minus fy less than. So, let f be a function defined for all x and satisfying fx. This is the condition given. We have to prove. Then prove that, prove that f is constant. If we, uh, in like, uh, wherever we, ha we are supposed to prove that f is constant, what to show? That the derivative is 0. And how you will show the derivative is 0? That you can see, obviously given condition we will be using. So, what I am doing? Let c be any point. Such that x is not equal to c, and this this uh, this is true for all x y. This is true for all x y. So it means it will be true for c also. What I am doing instead of y, I am putting c. Uh, 
and this is x minus c whole square one I am balancing here and one I am keeping at this side because x square is mod x square uh, we can uh, write mod x square is x square no issues at all so the same concept I have taken mod here this will be c because instead of y I am writing c this is c so one mod x minus c I am keeping here one I am taking in the uh, denominator now what exactly it is now for epsilon greater than 0 taking delta equal to epsilon we get that obviously I am applying the uh, uh, epsilon delta definition of derivative this we get for mod x minus c less than delta implies mod of fx minus fc upon x minus c is less than epsilon because uh, this this if this is less than delta then that thing will be less than epsilon it means finally my what what exactly it is this this definition is basically this is f dash c so finally what we are getting that the derivative uh, uh, this is this is f dash c and minus this less than epsilon implies f dash c is 0 and finally we can say that my function is constant because derivative is 0 only when the function is constant so this is how we apply the derivative concept here and mean value theorem concept because derivative we are using function is derivable uh, continuous and finally we are getting that on that condition applying this uh, theorem we can say that f is constant this is end of part 2 and in part 2 we took two problems on mean value theorems in one we uh, uh, understood that it's not every time uh, if function is derivable continuous then every time we get all the values inside the open interval no it's not the case but at least one value 100% will exist if function is derivable and continuous and we can apply the theorem to show uh, 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 if there is one condition and we, we apply the mean value theorem we can say that the function will be constant. If you want to learn engineering mathematics, please refer to the book by S. Chand Publishing. The ebook link is given in the description box below. If you like the video, please do like, share, and subscribe S. Chand Academy. Don't forget to press the bell icon for the future updates. Stay connected, stay tuned, keep watching upcoming videos. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.